everyone, it's Frankie Lou coming to you today again from the Grow Together Homestead where I'm bringing out 10 more jugs <laughs> for the winter sewing method to put out into my garden, into the snow banks here. So it's very exciting to me that so many of you who uh, live in the colder regions like here in southern Alberta are choosing to try this technique this year. I've definitely drank the Kool-Aid on this one. I, uh, I've been doing it for a few years now and have had really good success. And I'm noticing there are a lot of people are having lots of questions about why do we do this? It, or, or thinking that it can't work in these colder regions like in southern Alberta here. Or um, just not really sure how the whole process works. So I thought I'd answer a few of those questions today and um, hopefully give you a little bit more confidence about trying this. Because honestly, what can it hurt? Really? You know, like uh, people seem to be so afraid of making mistakes in their garden. But mistakes are creative opportunities. There's no such thing as a mistake. There's always something you can learn from it. I always think of my garden as um, a productive playground, right? Where I'm free to make mistakes because it's my garden. Nobody's, <laughs> nobody can judge me with what I'm doing here. And I hope that you guys will think of it that way too. I love to experiment. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so into the milk jug method. Enough about that. Let me um, answer some of the questions that I've seen. So why does it work? Well, first off, uh, most people when they get started with milk jug planting, they start with hardy perennials right because what a perennial is is a plant that's going to return year after year it usually its seeds are intended to last outside in the cold okay that is that is what a perennial does it goes through its cycle now here where i live i'm in zone three i know with pretty darn good confidence unless i make a silly mistake like forget to put um, holes in the bottom of my jugs so that there's no drainage that if I plant zone three perennials in these jugs, they're gonna come out almost no matter what. That's what these plants do. They survive in this area. So they survive the winter season. So why not help it along a little bit? I sort of think about, um, so people say, well then why wouldn't you just put the seeds out in the fall when you want a new bed or something and, and let mother nature take its course, yes. Mother Nature would take its course and you get some seeds, but just as say your hatcheries, they have salmon spawn or, or trout spawn. If you were to release all of those little trout spawn into the river, maybe one in a hundred would survive, like of, of egg, if they were eggs. But if you raise them to a certain state, there's going to be a higher survival rate. It's the same thing with these jugs. They are little... Um, chambers of protection. If a seed is left sand sitting on the soil, there's a few things that can happen that won't happen with this. For instance, a bird might come along and eat that seed. Or you might have a sudden wash off that would take the seed and plant it somewhere else you don't even want it. Or um, you can have things like they get buried too deep accidentally. Seeds need to be at a certain level so that they have the energy to reach the surface. These just give those seeds that would naturally survive in this habitat anyways, a much better survival rate. So, and also the fact that it is warmer in here, they get a little bit of a head start. So when my seedlings are ready to take out of here, my ground will be warm and ready to go. So um, a lot of the stuff that would be coming up naturally is just coming up. These are just a little bit further along. So in a zone three environment where I've got a really short growing season, I've often less than 90 days between frosts, I'm going to take advantage of every little trick I can. And these are my great big trick. I love them. Also, I want to talk about stratification, just in case I haven't uh, made that clear before. Stratification is a natural process that is in a lot of these hardy perennials here where their seed actually requires a good chilling period in order to break that seed coat, disintegrate it a little bit so that those seeds can come out of dormancy. That is how winter sowing originally got started. You can use it for other things as well later on in the season, 
for those plants that have seeds that require cold stratification in order to start their st get a dormancy this method is miraculous okay so now when it comes to zones if you haven't seen that before when you're choosing um, plants that are going to go in your your little milk jugs if you are deciding to do this a couple things to remember in Canada our agricultural hardiness zones are based on several factors uh, frost days um, our our humidity like what our precipitation is our nighttime temperatures whereas in the US it's basically just based on how cold it can be uh, how cold a plant can last so for instance I'm in zone 3 which means that my hardy perennials can survive to minus 40 degrees Celsius. Minus 40 degrees Celsius was what we were facing here a few weeks ago. So um, it's a good thing that zone three plants, which are what these ones are here, can handle that. Now, um, if you were in the States, that you're, this, the, there tends to be almost a whole zone difference in hardiness zones between the US and Canada between half to a full zone difference so if you are buying a plant or a seed from an American supplier and it says that it is zone 4 US hardiness zone it's probably closer to zone 5 okay so that's a really important thing to keep in mind and, and vice same versa. vice versa so um, if you are buying a plant seed in the US and it's from Canada here then and it says that it's zone 4 hardy it's actually zone 3 hardy where you are okay so I hope that makes sense there's it's uh, it is an important thing to remember when you're in these marginal zones and these low zones that I am in that you don't plant plants that will that are supposed to be perennials but they aren't gonna act as a perennial where you live because it's just too cold now annuals are a different story altogether. Annuals are intended to only have one year life cycle. Um, and there's differences between hardy annuals and tender annuals. So right now uh, we're heading into it. We've had a nice week here and the daytime temperatures have been hovering around eight or nine degrees and nighttime temperatures around uh, minus six, minus seven. But next week we're swinging back into the more seasonal temperatures and we're gonna be hovering around zero. That's going to be great for my hardy perennials. No problem, no skin off their nose. The only issue actually is ma maintaining the cold so they don't start coming up too early. And I've got whole other videos about that if you want to see about how to deal with if you have no snow or it warms up too quickly um, in the winter in the milk jug series. And I'm also going to start on my ho more hardy annuals. Um, I'm probably going to put out maybe my um and maybe even some of my vegetables and i'm considering putting out some of my cauliflower next week because honestly these temperatures aren't a very big deal for those hardier plants uh, cold loving plants i also um do do other vegetables in this but much later in the season i sort of progress i keep an eye on those nighttime temperatures because the daytime temperatures in these jugs does tend to be warmer than the exterior temperature outside. Also, I still do like to experiment. Uh, these five, these 10 jugs that I got out today, I've noticed that a lot of you are poking holes in the top because you want to allow some more ventilation. I've never done that, but hey, why not give it a try, right? I'm in my productive playground here. So what I've done is I've got some jugs that are, I've got two of each variety of plant that I'm putting in. Um, and I'm poked holes in the top of one jug and I left one jug as it is. And hopefully we'll see if there's a difference. And that's another thing I suggest that you do is do play and experiment with your own yard. Because I have friends who live 10 kilometers away have completely different conditions where they are. And they can grow things that I can't grow and vice versa, just because every little area has its own little microclimate. You may ask, why are we doing this? If we have these hardy perennials that we could put out at any time, why are we doing this now? I don't know about you, but I can't wait to get into my garden and get my hands dirty as soon as possible. So this is a little bit of a fix for me, you know? Um, it keeps me going, keeps me anticipating. It's, it's almost magical when you first see those seedlings come up. They, they're not going to be coming up for a long time, 
but I'm not doing this intensive planting period in one time frame. It gives me some time. I put about 10 out a week, 10, 20 jugs out a week, and I'll have hundreds out here by the time it's time to start putting them in the ground. If I sat down and tried to do that at one time, that would be a nightmare. So this is kind of a fun little activity I can give myself in the morning while I'm having my coffee. I'll, I'll prepare 10 jugs, and it's great. It's, it's a really wonderful thing. When we have a long winter, the way we do have here, it's nice to have these little activities. Well, I hope that was a little inspirational because boy, I did have some really great plants last year with so much less fussing. The lack of having to harden off was worth every, every, every half hour I spent making jugs compared to dragging things in and out of the house. Um, another thing I want to say, I know a lot of people are wondering about, well, what about the plastic? Well, that's one of the reasons I like this because I'm a huge fan of upcycling. And the fact that I can use these milk jugs another time before it gets recycled is very beneficial to me. Now, I'm not going to get my deposit back on these because uh, by the time I take it, I put it in the bin, it's been cut in half and it, you know, well, they look pretty trashed at the end. But as long as it's not falling apart, so they usually only good for one season this way because after that, the exposure to the sun and all the elements does tend to make them brittle. It sure is nice though to feel like at least there's another reuse before recycle, right? Okay, so I know I talked a lot today, but uh, it's also because uh, I'm noticing, once again, the same questions are coming up and I'm hoping that answered some of those for you. Please do keep those questions coming because it does help uh, those of us who do this understand what people want to know and maybe we have some some guidance in that area so and if you want to see how these things go into the ground later and maybe how I do do tomatoes later on the season I'm not going to start those for about another month but if you want to see all that just uh, subscribe or, and uh, keep an eye on what we're doing we'll be putting more of these out and yeah I hope that was helpful I hope you'll give it a try it's really fun to get your hands dirty when it's this cold out um, and honestly when you live in, in an environment like southern Alberta please do take advantage of every little trick you can because we all need it right and we also need to help each other so I've got some new ideas I'm trying this year from stuff that you guys told me about what you've been doing and I'm excited to try that so um, thank you for all your comments and I hope you'll take this chance to grow together today see you soon